thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We worship and we adore you. You're worthy to be adored, O oh God. You're worthy to be lifted up, O oh Lord Jehovah. We declare that we shall serve no other. You are our God. You are our King. We're forever dedicated to you, O oh Lord Jehovah God. We shall not lift up our hands to any idol. We shall not bow our knee to any idol, no matter the form. And Lord God, we will not lift up our voices to any idol, O oh Lord Jehovah God. We love your laws, O oh God, and we love your word, O oh King of glory, and we thank you that through your word we are guided, through your word we are protected, and through your word we are given our boundaries, O oh Lord Jehovah God, even as we have authority, O oh God. We thank you, King of glory, we come and we bow low before you, knowing that only you can do what no man can do. Father God, when people are given reports and told that there's nothing that the doctor can do, we know that you're the great physician and every disease bows to the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jehovah God, that there is no greater name than the name of Jesus. So no matter the name of any disease right now, we command it to bow down to the name of Jesus. We take authority over the airwaves in the name of Jesus Christ. We take authority, O Lord Jehovah God, over anything that would seek to exalt itself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we bring it to captivity now to the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we take authority over any demon, O oh God, or any entity, O oh God, that may seek, O oh God, to steal or even to detour or to distract, O oh God, the work of the living God. We bind every demon in the name of Jesus Christ. We cast it to the feet of Jesus Christ now. And right now we command anything that the enemy may be using to stop people from hearing the word of God, to stop people from believing the word of God, to stop people from being able to see what God is doing, to even try and to steal people's blessing. We command the enemy to stand off long enough for people to hear and for them to make an intelligent decision today that Jesus may be magnified and Jesus may be glorified. Satan, you know very well that God has given everybody free will. So right now, in this hour, in this time, we declare that you shall not interfere with that free will until the word of God goes out and people are able to make their informed and intelligent decision. Father, have mercy on your children. Oh God, may you increase faith, oh God, even those who may be watching, Lord God, that are cynical, that have an issue, oh God, and follow without even understanding why they're following, oh Lord Jehovah, may you convict them. Holy Spirit, you're the only one that can convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Spirit of the living God, even according to your word in John 16. Oh, sweet Jesus, we love you. Come and do what no man can do. Come and manifest yourself. Come and show your power. Come and show your glory. Come and release great healing as your word goes out. Your word says that you sent your word and healed their disease. Oh God, how it heals our disease. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God, that as your word goes out, it's going to heal even in the mighty and powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God. May you touch even the one who may be feeling unwell, but is cynical, oh God, that they may know that you heal. Father, may somebody jump up and believe because you healed them. We thank you and we bless you. We pray for every generational thing, oh God, and everything, oh God, that the children of God may have opened themselves to, that may be causing the enemy to claim legal ground. And now we speak the blood of Jesus, even as we've repented, oh God. We command the enemy to lay off in the name of Jesus Christ. For the blood of Jesus is speaking better things than the blood of Abel or any other blood. We give you thanks, we give you praise, Lord. We exalt your name and let every child of God say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. If you're here and believe in the Lord for healing, just begin to say, I believe. Begin to say, Lord, I believe. I believe, oh God, that you're going to heal me. This is a miracle service. We're having a miracle service. May you receive in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm hoping that some people came with handkerchiefs, even as they did in the book of Acts and their handkerchiefs received the power of God and were able to take them back to those who are sick and the Lord indeed is more than able to heal. Hallelujah. The word of God says um, in Numbers 21 that uh, in Numbers 21 the word of God says that Moses was told by the Lord to make a fiery furnace and uh, it is, this is Numbers 21, verse 8. 
to make a very furnace and to set it on a standard, and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten by the snake, when he looks at it, he will live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on the standard, and it came about. And if a serpent bit any man, when he looked at it, he was able to live. So we see a recording of healing, even before the blood of Jesus Christ, and this is on a rod that is lifted up. Why do I make reference to the Old Testament and this particular scripture? Because in the Gospel of Acts, uh, sorry, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 3, um, and verse 13, it says that no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, and this is the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have everlasting life, may not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see again a repetition of the same thing. And those who think that the Old Testament was set apart because of Jesus, you are wrong. Jesus said he did not come to do away with the law, but to strengthen it. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, we see it is written, but he was wounded for our transgressions. This is amazing because this is a prophet that is speaking even before this happens. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, and these are the wounds of Jesus Christ, by his stripes we are healed. We also see in Matthew 10 um, being told that as we go, you know, um, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, yeah, freely we have received, freely we give. Then in Psalms 107, we see verse 19 saying, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. The Lord sent his word, and he healed them, and he delivered them from their destructions, and let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. So healing is a promise of God. I'm just speaking based on the word of God, because we stand on the word of God when we're claiming healing. Mark 16, verse 17 to 18 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. These signs will follow those who believe. In, them. in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. So this is part of our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So I present to you, beloved, that it is impossible for the children of God to be able to lay hands on the sick and for the sick not to recover. So why is it that sometimes we lay hands on the sick and they fail to recover? Why is it that sometimes we're so afraid to lay hands on the sick? Sometimes we're afraid to lay hands on the sick because we don't believe, because we think that this is for somebody else, because we think that this is a gifting that somebody else will receive. Indeed, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there are those who have the gift of healing in a more manifested way than other people. But the word of God is very, very clear that these signs will follow those that believe. These signs will follow the children of God. And indeed, in the Great Commission, we are told that one of the things that we shall do is that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Of course, it's prudent to ask, you know, what about the issue of raising the dead? Why aren't we raising the dead? Because it is part of the authority that God has given us. And indeed, for me, one of the things that the Lord has taught me to do is to ask him. Every time I go to a place and somebody dies, I always ask the Lord, is it your will that this person would come back to life? So that if it is, then Lord God, I will lay hands on them and they will recover. Um, I came to learn some time back something very powerful. I attended a bonke, um, what do you call it, preaching in Uhuru Park. And I remember sitting and asking myself, why is it that this guy has to come? You know, this Mzungu has to come all the way from wherever it is he's come. And then, you know, it takes 20 years for him to come. And only when he comes, that's when suddenly people are being healed. That's where things are happening. People, you know, the dead are being raised and all that. And I began to ask God, why can't you use us in Kenya uh, to do the same thing here? And the Lord told me, observe. And then something interesting happened. The Lord opened my spiritual eyes. And there was an arrangement at the front, and there's a way that people were sitting. And on the right side, I began to see people looking like um, they were wearing white. It's like all of a sudden they were wearing white robes, white robes on the right. And then it moved to the center, and then it began to move to the left. And then suddenly it stopped. And then the Lord said, now listen. And then I heard uh, Reynard Bokeh say, on my left, you know, that it was my right, but it was his left. He said, there is healing right now. On my left, there is healing right now. And then he began to say, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. And it was following exactly the trail that I was able to see. And the Lord then led me to scripture that says, and I forgot to check that scripture, that says that Jesus said, I do nothing except what I see my father doing. 
And the thing with miracles is that miracles are about doing exactly what you see the Lord doing. The Lord says, I am healing somebody. And you declare, the Lord is healing somebody. So it's not the preacher who is healing somebody. The preacher is just declaring what they are seeing the Father in heaven doing. And they proclaim it and they say, the Lord is healing somebody here. The Lord is touching somebody here. The Lord is changing somebody here. So what was it that I used to be able to come and declare today that God is going to heal people on this platform? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we were having our family altar. And as I began to thank the Lord after we had sung, I began to praise God for the work that he's doing and for the things that he's doing and all that. And then the Lord began to tell me, "You today you preached about my principles. Now tomorrow I need you to begin to do this. And I began to feel healing in my body. I began to see the move of God. I began to see people being touched. I began to see people in hospitals walking and being healed. I began to see children being touched and suddenly the pain going. And the Lord began to reveal to me and show me as I was preaching today, that was last night, he began to show me as I was preaching today, people were being changed, people were being transformed, people were being healed. And that's how I was able to then come and speak with confidence that people will be healed today. So on being healed today, it just depends on you and your faith and your ability to believe. And even the, those who are cynical, the Lord has said they will be touched <clears throat> so they may be able to believe. And I know that the Lord has enabled some atheists to come onto this platform. And some people also who don't believe, some Muslims, some people also who are not Christians. And I know that the Lord has brought you here that you may be able to see that which the Lord is doing. Now on to my own testimony. Um, when I got born again, um, I have shared before that I was Catholic and didn't really know anything about being born again. I didn't even know that's what I was doing. I didn't know that's what it was called until much later when I described to somebody what had happened to me and they said, oh my goodness, you got saved. And then um, when uh, suddenly um, my, my, my best friend um, told me that there was somebody who was preaching in, um, uh, in Amboretta, so we went and it was these really young guys who were preaching. And one of the things the guy said, this was the first um, Protestant, let me put it as Protestant, but non-Catholic thing that I'd ever attended because I was so dedicated to the Catholic faith. I used to say, you know, I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic. I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic. I used to say it so arrogantly. If you came to preach to me, I'll tell you I don't listen to that rubbish. I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic, you know. But God had mercy on me and came to my room. And so when we went to Oboretum, these guys said, you know, God heals, da 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 And I've never heard anybody say that God heals. So I remember paying attention saying, God heals, okay, all right. If they say God heals, God heals, you know, I've been listening to him, he's been talking to me, I've been reading his word, I've found so many things that I've never been taught before in the Catholic Church, and now I'm learning God heals, I believe it. They spoke scripture, I said, okay, I've never seen it before, but I believe it, it's in the word of God. And so they said, okay, who'd like, who believes and would like to be healed? And I ran to the front. And why did I go to the front? I was very young. I was, you know, just a teenager. But I had had ulcers from the time that I was nine years old. So I went to the front, believing God to heal me of ulcers because it was very, very painful. And the things I could not eat, the things I could not do, and I would always have this pain. <coughs> and I went to the front and they laid hands on us. I didn't feel anything. I didn't see anything. But I was like, yeah, cool, okay. They said, you lay hands on the sick and they recover. I know I've recovered. And they said, when you get home, do something you could not do before. And what did I do? I went and I put skumawiki in my food and I ate. And there was no pain. And I said, oh, wow, okay, let's go bigger. So I went and I put chili and there was no pain. And that was the last time that I had pain in my stomach because of ulcers. Once in a while when I'm fasting, the enemy has tried to bring it. And one of the things I have learned to say is no one can deliver out of the hand of God. And when God does something, it is irreversible. And instantly the moment I say that, it goes. One of the other things that has happened to me is I remember in campus, um, in particular, there was this particular street that it was said some girl was raped or was killed or something, something bad happened to this girl. But as I was getting to this street, it was called Cassandra Street, named after the girl called Cassandra. So that was the story. I remember getting a very sharp headache. I don't know whether it was related to that whole stretch or not. But I remember that I was seeking the Lord and practicing the gift of healing. And beloved, the thing with faith is that faith has to be put into practice. But also, one of the things I've come to learn about God is that the things of God are like a gym 
okay? A gym, gymnasium, yes, you heard me right. When you go to the gym and you exercise your muscles so that then when you go and lift your shopping, then the shopping doesn't feel so heavy because your muscles are stronger because you've exercised your muscles. So we must learn to exercise our spiritual muscles. How do you exercise your spiritual muscles? You're trusting God to learn about healing. Trust the Lord by laying hands on your children before you take them to hospital and then check whether they're healed. When you get a cold, lay hands on yourself. You feel a cold coming. It begins normally by a sore throat. You begin to feel funny and that itchy feeling. Hold your throat and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke sickness from my body. If it doesn't go, ask God, is it the language? And ask the Holy Spirit, what do I say? You can say, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I bind the demon of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep trying and checking. What is it that works? And different things do work at different times. Sometimes, by the way, healing will come when you repent. Sometimes healing is because the enemy has seen a gap and he comes through that gap because he has seen um, sickness. Um, sorry, he's seen a gap of disobedience and so he comes. All right. Then, um, so I'm walking through Cassandra, getting into Cassandra, and I get this 